Well, it's a very special welcome to my home, Cartref House, and home of Violette's Museum. It's a very personal tribute, um, but it's something I wanted to do because I didn't want the day to go, which is, I'm sure all you good friends of hers know, is Saturday the 26th of June and when she should be celebrating her 100th birthday. So, happy birthday, Violette. Before I take you down to show you the surprise at the museum of her new lovely room, her reading room, I'd like to take you and we'll walk along on the Millennium Green. I can tell you several things that when you come on her special days, I'm, I doubt very much of you know and realise about. We are now on the Millennium Green and we will be walking to the museum th this way and when the whole idea of it came about and it was open on the 24th of June 2000, this was the official way in. I was not going to have people through my garden who were going to come this way. And we also now have joined the actual trail. Violet's got this wonderful one that the Allied Forces Association put in. It's a six mile walk and it starts just this side of Hereford and then goes miles and miles over the Aikenbury Hills and down through Kingsthorne, down to Much Birch and eventually down to the museum. So I thought that might be something that perhaps you didn't understand when you visited me on Violette's days. What happened was, I think it was 2002, and the great outbreak came of foot and mouth. And there was a few sheep grazing in the field, the kennel field, and I thought, oh, if they catch anything, I'll never forgive myself. <laughs> so I got a mat, and put outside the entrance to the museum, soaked it in disinfectant and down through my garden they came and they've been coming down ever since. <laughs> now we're walking now across to see the actual war memorial. It's Wormelow's official war memorial. We're just about a hundred years late but anyway we've got it in the end and we had all the tiniest children down from Much Birch School uh, and that was in the 14th, 2014, and they helped pouring rain, and they helped to plant the tree. Thank God I had enough sense to get the tree in officially the day before, but they all had teaspoons, and I held a box of soil, so with their teaspoons, they scattered it round, and so planted the tree. On each November we now have a ceremony here which our local vicar very kindly comes and conducts and I think each year at least two wreaths are placed for Violette. There's the plaque of teaspoons in the rain and it and it, it rained my Jove and they were so tiny so that was the 7th of November 2014. Um, now which that's one of Violette's, yes. In very grateful and special memory of Violette Sabo, George Cross, from friends and of members of the Epping Forest Pipe Band. So they sent that one. That was only last year. Of course, we couldn't have a ceremony because of with all the virus problems and that. And, and that's a special memory of Villa Zabo from a great admirer, Neil McKay, from Liverpool. And this has only been put in a week, in fact I haven't really had time to, to see it. The same replica is on my house, telling the history of this green. Um, it was so... Um, now when was it? The chestnut tree, there it is, was planted on the 12th of March 79 in loving memory of my mother, Muriel Lee Rigby, 
She died in December 77, and this field was especially purchased in her memory on the 8th of November 78. Oh, by her daughter, that's right. And the special word of Mispa. Most likely you all know, but many people don't. And it's apparently, it's, instead of having lots of words, May the Lord watch between thee and me while we are parted one from another. And it just has one word and does the lot. And I thought that so few people would ever see it on the house. I mean, the original's on the house and always will be. But I've just had this made here on the green so when people visit, they'll know how it came about. So I bought a field and then I had um, four little cattle that my neighbour immediately said, um, Peter, Paul, what is it, Paul? Um, <laughs> and now we've got the four disciples. Oh, well, I'm sure you all all know. And that went on for a while. And then just before the millennium, um, I think it was the Queen who apparently wanted 250 millennium greens set up in the country. And so I decided to give her, give, give the field to the country and it was accepted and now is safe for a thousand plus years. Never can be built upon and always be a, a green open space. And I think, well, as I failed to get married and have any children, at least for a thousand years, my name will live on because it is the Rosemary Rigby Millennium Green which pleases me very much. And um, there was a very nice ceremony happened in London at the end of that year. And I think it was the Queen Elizabeth Hall or somewhere. It was a very big place. And all the representatives from Millennium Greens were invited to go. So it was very interesting. But um, it, at most of them, of course, had to raise the money to get the field. But having given it, and it's carried my name, it was rather a, a lovely, happy day. And um, so that's another thing to share with you. Now, Violet had lots to do with this field. I expect you all know, without a fox, she would have never visited Herefordshire. Her uncle was the whipper in with the South Herefordshire hunt for 15 years. Apparently that's the master's second pair of eyes and that brought her down as a little girl from London on a school holiday. Um, one occasion there was an old cart horse grazing in here. That was too much to resist for Violette so she decided she'd like to have a ride. So holding on to his mane she ran alongside, gave a jump onto his back. Of course, the cart horse wasn't used to carrying anybody, so he immediately bucked and off she fell. So it just shows what a funny little girl and, and so brave, you know, and all these things she did and, and didn't seem to worry any of her. Then another time, a young man called apparently with his motorbike. Well, again, she wanted a ride. So she sat on the back and apparently tore around this three and a half acre field. I think about a dozen times. Violet, apparently just like an aeroplane, holding on to his waist, I suppose, with her arms, but her legs straight out at the side and, and, and thoroughly enjoyed um, th that trip. <laughs> but again, not everybody would have wished to go on because she was only little, but that, that didn't matter. And then she came back here. The last time we can um, know of her being here was the first week of May, 44 and um, she taught the local children there was one gentleman living on the hill he came every year on her special days but he had now died several years ago but he was one of the children that she taught to play rounders and a few years ago the BBC wanted to come and, and reenact the idea so they came and uh, it, of course they wanted children so I went up onto the hill, knocking on doors, saying, can I borrow your children? 
<laughs> I came down like the Pied Piper with a nice group of children, and the and the it was duly um, filmed and transmitted, and they they very kindly left me with the bat and the ball. So they're in the museum, all these uh, treasures that have to be looked looked after. Right, we can move on. I think now towards uh, the the museum. That would be lovely. So we will be walking on Violette's own walk in a moment. And the, it's looking fairly tidy for you, which is wonderful. The farmer came and cut the hay last week, came back, bailed it, and it left yesterday. And it didn't have a spot of rain. So I think Violette must have kept the, the rain away. And he always likes to have it for his little calves. So I said, as he drove off, I hope they will enjoy it. It looked very, very nice. By the way, the chestnut tree that I planted in memory of my mother, uh, she a, has a, an order on, a preservation order. The youngest tree in Herefordshire to have one because normally they don't have a preservation order till you see the axe, um, man with an axe, and you rush to see if the council will put the order on. Why well, look round there? Because I suddenly thought, what well, the earth have I done with my um, parasol? But I know what I've done. I left it down by the gate. It's not quite as hot as, as I thought it might be. So what happens if in a hundred years, if anything happened and she had to be taken down, another chestnut tree will be put on the same spot. So we'll always have the tree here. And the small tree ahead, that is an English oak, and that was placed 11.30 a.m. on the day of the millennium. And you who were here and came when Violette, her museum was open the 24th of June 2000 and Virginia McKenna who played the part of Violette in Carve Her Name with Pride. She came and opened the museum, I don't know about two, two o'clock I think, <laughs> and then at four o'clock she walked over to the chestnut tree and opened the Millennium Green. So the two things were on the same day. So there's Violette celebrating a 100th anniversary and the Millennium Green and the museum celebrating their 21st. It is another interesting fact. So now we're on, the, on her, her route and the idea is they leave from just this side of Hereford and it's quite a, a stiff one I understand and the destination is the museum. One sad thing that happened with this green would have been the only one to have it. If you remember in France um, the they would put out flares to bring the little Lysander planes in. So I had three here, the shape of a letter L. One at, down where we just started from, one here, one at the top. Always be careful when you're giving something because the powers that be decided that they could be very dangerous to, to people. So, I'm always very, very glad that Bill Rosser, who built the museum, he was getting very ill. He almost crawled around to build those lovely pieces. I went to his funeral on the Friday and they moved in on the Monday and they knocked them all to pieces and took away with them the rubble. Very hard. It would have been so unique. And now we get here and now these three plaques were placed on top, one on top of each of the pieces. 
and they were lovely and these were donated by Westlands of Yeovil in Somerset who made the little Lysander Plains and the gentleman was wonderful he came oh, three or four times I think to help me he ran their museum and and he helped me a lot to 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 get these special things for Violette now I wonder I think I shall show you outside before we go in might be a good idea we'll just go back into the garden for a second you who come every year will remember the rose bed with 23 red roses at the end of the museum that is what I had to have taken out and on that spot is where the new room sits so then you will remember this lovely piece of sculpture which was in the rose bed with all the coronavirus and everything else the, the person who gave it was going to have it moved but he couldn't because he was stuck in another country so that was the first thing we had to do before we got started on the new room to get it into here but actually it's got a lovely position because everybody coming to the museum now will pass by now this is the original on the left so I'm sure you I have a job because this young man Joe Price who was the stone um, and, and built it stonemason he's made such a wonderful job the stones sort of merged together uh, and um, are, are just wonderful actually you don't really when I look at it now if I'm just walking about or something I think to myself it looks right and it looks substantial and I think well I can't ask for better than that that's really good Joe had a terrible year he had a, a little nephew of five who he thought the world of little George and little George died not of the coronavirus he had that to come his grandfather caught that and he died of that but this little tiny boy died and trying to think of something to give the uncles a bit of a lift I said to him now George and I we've got a challenge for you and we want you to carve the letter G in a stone and I, now I'll take you and show you the letter G is carved and the tiny boy's in heaven Joe this morning rushed here with his lovely arrangement of flowers that his wife who's the auntie of George has had arranged and then that from here off he went to work and I've a lot of people know because I had a wonderful tortoise that I had for many years and how strange because little Albert who is George's cousin and Joe's son three years old now bought a tortoise and so all his pocket money has gone and George has a tiny tortoise I, I hope they they know that you will all appreciate and they've got a big plan on at the moment that they want to walk to Woodicombe now is that right oh dear in Devon no yes Woodicombe that's right in Devon since I've never yet had a holiday because I've never had time I all these things I don't know them personally but I, I hear a, a people speaking of them and um, so they are having a sponsored walk and hopefully please God they'll raise a lot of money in George's name which will go to help little children in Herefordshire now I said it's going to incorporate this stone with a little competition for tiny people visiting the museum because I think sometimes they find it a bit trying so the idea is they go and if they can find the stone with the big G on it 
they're going to have the prize of a lollipop and they're in the new room already. I didn't know it would be a lollipop. I said to Uncle Joe, what was George's favourite sweet? And he said, a lollipop. Oh, well, I said, it'll always be a lollipop. So I'm sure a lot of little ones coming will have lots of fun and enjoy eating a lollipop. So there we are. Now I think we'll go. I don't know whether you have this flower in your garden. I, I, I don't know. But I, apparently it's called the prettiest weed in Herefordshire. It, I didn't certainly plant it here, but she's settled so happily and she's just in front of the museum now. So, but I think it's very pretty. Thank you. I notice you'll see we've got three steps here, but don't worry, anybody who wishes to visit in a wheelchair, we have a, a lovely gate for wheelchairs. And the, both gates have just been painted. A gentleman rushed down um, to paint those only this week trying to get ready for for you to see, see what we're trying to get up to if we go to the end of the museum there was a piece on about hadrian's wall uh, a few months ago and apparently even now when people are walking there they find where the romans carved their initials so i couldn't let that go without thinking of it so I asked Joe if he would carve his initials for Violette. So his initials there and 2020. Oh, and another interesting thing, we found a stone, a V for Violette, put in by Bill Rosser. So we looked after it till the wall was up to there and it's been replaced. So now, as you can see, I haven't got a rose garden, but I've got plenty of grass growing very nicely. And I hope you'll all think that wall is beautiful. I really love walking up this way. And so many of you who park in the field next will walk up and see this remarkable wall ahead of you. And I do, Joe was so an inspiration. He, put so much work and so much thought into it so we're very lucky and it was funny that when he'd finished he said to me the one thing you need is a seat here anyway I had I bought this seat a, a year or two ago and I'd never used it so Joe brought the flowers this morning so I said will you just go and fetch it so the seat is there now and now I've got to get the key to go back into the museum. I don't know whether you, you all remember the plaque, but it's just where it was. Nothing's had to be disturbed in that. And, and uh, people very often think it's rather lovely. Wonder where the words came from. Well, remarkably, they came from me. So that was quite funny. So now we've come into the original room of the museum, one I expect a lot of you have been into. Going back to that first day though, I think they were queuing outside here till 8.30 at night to get in. Because you who were here will remember, as I do, there was thought to be 2,000 people here. They came from all over the world to be here. And it was, a, a, well, not a special day, the most unrem, an, in, just remarkable day one will ever, ever live through. Very tiring. Because it was funny in the morning. I remember getting up and I hadn't got a voice. I was, I was I, 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 everything had gone into the day before. And there was a group had come because they were going back to America and they'd gone without their resistance ale that um, a Y Valley brewery had brewed specially um, for Violette. So all the inns in Herefordshire uh, were um, drinking uh, her, um, her name in, in resistance ale. 
I don't know, I'd love if I could that we could get a run for next year because I don't think I mentioned it but I expect many of you already know. The sad thing is that I can't have her special day this year which was to be Sunday the 11th of July because of the coronavirus so it has had to be postponed. Virginia particularly, very keen, I was never to say cancelled, postponed until the 10th of July next year. It would be lovely but the trouble apparently with beer is now, now I don't know a thing about it, but you apparently have to brew such a colossal amount which is, well uh, this makes the difference between being able to have it and not being able to have it because if we had too much I'd, I would never be able to sell it would I, I would never get through it. Um, so, it, but it would be very nice if it, if it could happen. Um, they did just <laughs> before the museum was open they had a, their own beer festival and I always thought it was very funny because I was invited to go along to open it but I'd never tasted a spot of beer in my life so I was landing with a with a, a glass and I, I had two or three sips but I can't say that I, I, I was overcome and taken to to drinking beer from then on you know but it was funny. Um, I'm just trying to think one thing I always remember Virginia saying of all the films she'd been in this was when she came on a private visit with her own little granddaughter um, she had not a, um, a poster from Carver Name with Pride she got one from every other film and here she found two which was rather funny it was two different gentlemen they sent them from different parts of the country I think and but then I had them framed and in this room can you imagine there was nothing on the walls on the Thursday before the grand opening on the Saturday and this wonderful young man came from Hereford Museum and he brought the one, two, four big plaques in his car God knows how he ever managed to get them here I know he came at 10.30 in the morning we worked at 7.30 at night I know I couldn't do it now, but I, uh, I, I don't know how I did it then. My arms just ached and ached. <laughs> it was uh, really, really hard. I've managed to... We have an archway through now, you can see, and it's into her reading room, Violet's reading room. And it was quite interesting because there's a very nice young man in London whose mother went to school with Violette and um, I told him uh, it was to be the reading room and he said well I would like to think that it is going to be Violette's reading room so it is that's that's how it is now <laughs> he came at the time when we launched the appeal for this original museum <laughs> and I got him um, accommodation it was quite a lonely farm who, who took guests and I never forgotten because he said when the dark came in a black cloud <laughs> falls over Herefordshire well apparently he's never been in the dark in London because they've always got lights so he found it <laughs> very very different but it was a lovely and it was his mother, she never came, she wasn't well enough. But I always remember her telling me that Violet's hair was as black as a raven's wing with the same sheen upon it. So it must have been very nicely kept and, and very lovely hair. Yes. Now we'll go through the archway and we're actually going into the, the new room. This is what I hope will bring you all so much joy as it has me, but even more wonderfully that I feel it has Violette. Because I came in just after the, it was almost semi-finished and I walked in here and the piece was incredible. And I knew then that Violette was saying, it's okay, and that she was happy. She, she has all sorts of funny ways to make sure I know what she's what she's saying not that I have ever seen her I think she'd know that would be a bit too much she'd lose me then but um, I, I know when she when she's happy and uh, so it was lovely to know that she was happy with it 
By the way, there are the lollipops in all the different colours. I wonder which, I was thinking last night when I put them in, I thought, I wonder which colour that little children will choose. But they're all there anyway, ready for them. Um, that's the a, a piece about this remarkable walk that you've just ended on. And that is, um, uh, th so people love to have these um, set forth. I wanted you to see that because that's one of the photographs on the Millennium Green 11th of November effort. And all the children, I think they've all, they've all written a poem there, but these are the gr bigger ones. The, they were the tiny, tiny people at the, the, the first one. Now many of these pictures nobody's ever seen, heaven knows how, but in the bungalow I've had to store them for years and years. And it, this one is a funny one with the Lysander plane flying. <laughs> and a gentleman came several years ago and he was talking about this picture and I said, well how interesting, because I've got um, a picture like that at the bungalow. He said, well, actually, I, I commissioned it. <laughs> so poor man, he didn't see it. So one day I hope he'll come back and it'll be here for him to see and enjoy. <laughs> I thought it was really, really strange that. And uh, that was an interesting uh, piece. Um, it was at a hotel, the Home Lacey Hotel, which is a Warners. And quite a lot of people come to stay. And Violet has a beautiful um, suite there. And there is Virginia cut in the violet ribbon. And we're together in different pictures. And it was a wonderful day. That's been in the, up in the uh, bungalow, so I've got nowhere that I, that I could possibly show it. It is lovely to, that it's here now, where it should be. By the way, all the pieces of furniture um, I've begged. So this beautiful piece is from the Chase Hotel in Ross on Wye. So you have stayed at the Chase will remember it, I'm sure, because it was in the entrance hall and I used to watch it and think what a, how beautiful it was every t time I went there. And so when I heard they were unfortunately going to close, I contacted the manager and said, could I possibly have it for Violet's room? Which is quite peculiar because I've had it now, it might be a couple of years now, and I've had to store everything that's in here in my wonderful garage down by the road. There's the fox. Always remember, she would never have come without one. I have heard it said <laughs> sometimes there could be X number of foxes at night in that little field opposite where the sheep were when I was worried about them catching the foot and mouth. And they taunt the hounds who were locked up, sort of saying, ha ha, can't catch me. We're <laughs> and of course they couldn't catch them, but um, fancy that the, the, the animals would, would think that way and do that. It was really strange. And now that's the city of, um, oh crumbs, where is it? The, the, the Lord Mayor came a year or two ago, Stoke-on-Trent, and they brought me, she brought those two. There's a little flying Lysander. That's the one that a gentleman in rugby made, and it's made from matchsticks. Isn't that remarkable? And these wonderful glasses, this marvellous gentleman, he was so frail, I'd see him down at the gate and I'd, oh, will he ever make it to the museum? And he had all this wonderful work and her poem, her wonderful poem, The Life That I Have, is all engraved on the glasses. Oh, and here's Tem, you must see Tem. He's been away for a few years because he had to go to Tempsford um, because they had a special event. And the lady who owned Ted, she came here some years ago now. She was a very tall lady, 
uh, but she was known as Tiny. And she and her husband met at, the, at Thamesford and they married from there. And uh, so Thames come back. The pilots flying out on these very dangerous missions would ask if he could accompany them because the feeling came that if Tem went with them, they would return, which is a nice thought. So I'm also pleased to, to now have him back again, which is lovely. The two, um, the life stand on the ground there with the young agents just coming off and one of the uh, Maki got a gun trying to guard them as they leave the plane and the flying one they also came from Westlands from their from their museum so I've had those the whole time and they have been up the, all the time oh I hope you've noticed the lights in here which I think are just wonderful I I'm so glad they worked and everything and I've got the most wonderful storage because there's a lovely space below oh England under Hitler I always say without that book I would never have done anything in the museum but when you re read it and realized that had they marched in here there would have been nothing for us at all and that's an interesting piece the butterflies of Berlin I don't know whether you know of them but Berlin was bombed to smithereens and there was nothing left and they, of course they didn't have rationing as we did hard as it was because of course Hitler was going to win so he didn't need rationing and after the war some gifted people came from their houses and had a look round at all the disaster and thought to themselves could we make something of beauty to come out of this and somebody had the idea of the butterflies and the colors on that butterfly they gathered the rubble together they hadn't got they hadn't got um, paint brushes they hadn't got anything all they could do get was the rubble on the ground and then they sold them to the soldiers coming home to make a bit of money to get food and my uncle and Godfather brought that one home for me. So, there's an awful lot on the back, which wasn't much good when, I, when they couldn't see it. So wh what I've done is I've had the actual, all the words printed on here. So anybody who wants to read about it and, and what, what uh, harsh times they were, mine is a Vanessa Joe. They're all numbered and it's in memory of summer 1945 and mine is a hundred number 124 and she is a Vanessa Jo. Yeah. Now then. Now these are, are robins um, that a gentleman sent. They have never been up but they jolly well are now. That picture is one that Virginia is very very fond of. If you look at it closely it's a picture of Violette and has the words of her poem written across it. I'm not quite sure why but anyway um, it's never been up because I've never been any space but it's up now. This is the other poster from the film that Virginia hadn't got one and that picture above is looking from it's a lovely hotel on the hill called the pilgrim hotel and the idea is looking down here to the museum with a, a lot of artist license and if you look there that's the museum it, but it is a it is lovely and it was um, the lady her she and her husband gave a wonderful donation to help me achieve this room not only did they do that she's a wonderful artist so Violette now has a lovely picture of hers as well that's a picture of Arisaig house in Scotland where the the young people where they trained and it was very nice we actually had the gentleman and his wife who owned it one year here 
and, but unfortunately we've lost him he died not long afterwards and that is another lovely picture of a flying Lysander and this piece is very very clever it's the armistice clock so we've got Violet in the centre and the 12 girls around the outside their name underneath each girl then you look to the four corners and find where each was put to death in the camps the gentleman in Worcester did I, I, I think it's marvellous not only did he think of it but he, he made it it came too I expect you'll remember the girl the ATS lady she was in the other room but she's had to move over because her, her space went and of course you'll remember the wonderful picture of the girl on the roof which a gentleman in the next village it was a very special thing to him was coming here on their bicycles he and his mate and he said they got off at the gate and he said I looked up and I said to my mate and what the devil is she doing up there and he said at the time she wasn't holding on she was just balancing with her arms and running they say there wasn't a drain pipe she couldn't scale or tree climb and apparently the family nickname for her was the little monkey she was known to be the little monkey who grew up and then took on the Gestapo I expect many of you I don't know whether it's still in existence I hope it is had the magazine called this England very patriotic and went all over the world I had a lot of help when I was getting the museum from Canada and, and, and Australia often send donations which is interesting and um, it was a four page spread and the gentleman rang and he said how lovely if you could get that framed anyway I rang this England explaining I haven't got any money <laughs> but I would very much like it as long as they could do it and frame it and they brought it so it's always been greatly admired all through the years that has and oh then we've got some more pictures that have been able to come different people oh, that was Virginia's gift to me when she came to help me launch the appeal for, for the museum with herself and Paul Schofield working on the set of Carver Name with Pride and the lady on the right is Odette Churchill who worked the whole um, 16 weeks with her to help her to perfect her role and Virginia said at the time you'll notice we're laughing she said when you try to portray a character and as tremendous distress in it in the role when you have your break you, you just ha you just need to laugh which sounds um, very sensible doesn't it um, and, and this little cabinet I begged from Simply Stunning in Wormelo and it's just wonderful it's got two lights in it and I'm so thrilled because I'm going to be able to keep things that have and for sale if I need something I've only got to come through the archway and just get whatever I need this gentleman arrived last autumn and I wondered myself whether it might be that Violette was when captured was actually on her way to to meet him I'm not quite sure but his wife had most carefully kept everything all his clothes in a in a, a big suitcase well I got the suitcase as well so I think he's got a change of everything he needs for at least 12 months but it's lovely that that, that he, we've got him it really is that's Douglas Bader and when I was trying to get this first off in Worcester there was a gentleman he wrote books and he would take over the Shire Hall unbelievable what he did and you would go in you could buy your book and then there were tables all the way down the whole length of, of the, the big Shire Hall and there would be all these very very frail elderly handicapped pilots who used to fly in them and the 
the books would go from one to dum to dum and they would all sign them. It was a very unique thing and it worked. And I remember the one year when I was invited to go, I had a stand begging for some money to, to get the museum for Violette. But I remember that Lady Bader was there that year and it was very, very nice to meet her. And just to put the cream on the top, I remember, I think it was a hurricane. And this plane flew the whole way down the street, circled round and came all the way back up. It was quite impressive. And you will see with, with his image, such a lot of the different pilots have signed. That lovely painting is quite new. It's a work of a lady in Hereford. And uh, she'd only recently lost her husband, but she phoned me about October time and said um, she would love to paint Violet's image. And she wanted to do it for um, as a Christmas present for Violetta and myself and she did and it came just before Christmas and that's the Epping Forest Pipe Band do you remember when we were over at the War Memorial they'd laid a wreath last year well there they all are in all their glory uh, with Virginia in the middle as a crowning glory and it's such a lovely bright picture it was lovely they came and they led the parade the year they came from Park Hall in Wormelow to the museum. And there's, oh, that's Violet, and that's the poster that uh, Y Valley Brewery um, had commissioned uh, re, re their resistance ale. Oh, I think it's lovely. They yeah, did it beautifully. Oh, and that's on one of the days. That's um, myself and with the one of the fanny wreaths um, and uh, with, with our vicar which was lovely to have that lady was mayor of monmouth in 2000 and she was had been a buckmaster before she married so she said if only she could have known a lot more about what i was trying to do she could have helped me tremendously in my my year that year but of course she, we didn't meet till afterwards that's one of Tanya looking very happy handing out leaflets on that's on the day of the opening and that's the poem to a rear gunner which I understand is a very very dangerous position and I have had that I've had the words taken off and rescued because that's getting rather faint and there's Violette with with some of her medals there I wonder I spread to, oh that is the stonemason that's Joe looking very happy and uh, so it's very nice to have that um, oh I, and there's uh, the um, this uh, there's a piece coming out in the Daily Telegraph on the 19th in their in their booklet I understand not in the newspaper and uh, it, it was a promise the editor made to me when last year they made a muddle and put an image of Violet in that never should have appeared and um, so hopefully that will help again it's all the things that and that is a memorial in from France the strange thing is, the pan is on a roundabout, so I, I, I find it, the light and the dark and the moon, and it, it's, a, it's wonderful, but how it's strange to put it on a roundabout, because that means that everybody's got to park and, and then go across, I suppose, a busy road to it. So this is the table where I hope people will have lots of pleasure. Um, uh, get um, one of the books or and uh, or these wonderful photograph albums so that will that'll be absolutely wonderful because they've never had anywhere to sit down because if the other room's full of people they haven't got a chance on earth well now they can come quietly in here and sit down 
and, and read and, and, and enjoy and find a, a, an interest, hopefully. Oh, that's um, a little uh, picture. The Lysander and that Violette and um, Nora, I think. And Bob Large, who brought her out of France after her first mission, he signed that one. So now you can see all these books and everything that are, that that are that are here. So, and it's oh well to me it's just absolutely just oh what I wanted. I, it's like more than a dream come true to me. I think it's just wonderful. If um, if anybody ever thinks that they would like to give a donation. To, to help me to continue because I can assure you 36,000 pounds having gone um, the 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 it, the cupboard's rather bare you know so it uh, would always be wonderful and always be most appreciative if that was possible and and I would like to say thank you there's a, a wonderful young man here going quietly round um, helping me and doing all the filming with a very bad leg so I do thank you so very much for helping me. It's just that I long to do this just small personal tribute for Violette and, uh, and now you've helped me to achieve it. And thank you very much. And thank you if you managed to watch. Grateful thanks and please come and join us, not this year, but on the 10th of July next year, 2022. Thank you so very much. misère